Uh, for those of you guys that don't know, um, the Philly Sixers are playing the Atlanta, Atlanta Hawks, and uh, pretty pretty intense game. Um, anyway, what's cracking? How y'all doing, man? Um, very special guest. You guys already know. I already probably reason why you're already you know in here and filling up. Um, he's backstage right now. We just finished talking. We talked through Aquashella. It was it was great, 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 and I'm happy to have him on. Um, Aqua Balls, thank you for coming through. Skull Aquatics, Danny Weshi was cracking, um, and uh, let me tell you, I uh, had a delayed flight. For those of you guys that saw my live stream in the airport, I was a little perturbed. Um, and quiet as it's kept, really didn't get a lot of sleep at the Aquashella. You know, when you stand somewhere different, it's kind of weird to kind of get adjusted. But um, after that, I, I came home, still couldn't sleep. And then I had to wake up and go to work and, and get with the summer school students. So I, uh, I've been up. I've been up. But um, I just wanted to make sure that I uh, brought, brought, brought you what, what I can. Um, you'll start seeing some of these Aquashella vi videos drop um, a little bit at a time because I know every everybody's going to Aquashella load you guys up, but it was a it was a definitely a good time, and I'm not I'm not the only one to here to tell you about the time that I had. My first Aquashella was in Chicago the year before the pandemic hit, and um, my first one was it was stellar. It was stellar. What's up, Mark? Uh, Muppet Widmus. PB, Pompeii Ranch, RB, thank you guys for coming through. And um, so this one was uh, this one was definitely, definitely pretty cool. But enough about what I think about it. Let's go ahead and, and, and bring the man up. I'm going to give him the thumbs up in the back. Thumbs up in the back. If you thumbs up me back, he's ready to go. Oh, <laughs> he's ready to go, y'all. Hey, here he is. Ben. Oh, chart or been on six. I think we get a legal name change. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and thank you for having me here. I, I appreciate it. Absolutely, uh, Ben. I thank you again for uh, coming up up here uh, today and jumping in the hot spot. A hey, busy fish chat. I don't know if he knows what he's gotten himself into, you guys, but we'll get to that. Later, <laughs> um, I reserve. Man. I reserve the right to bail at any moment. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't you go nowhere, Ben. Don't you? <laughs> hey, uh, shout out to Rico Stan, I, who I was on his program not that long ago, and also to Aqua Balls, who I had the pleasure of meeting in California. Hello, Aqua Balls. Hello, Rico Stan. There it is. All right. Monica Lynn is in the place. My moderator extraordinaire. I appreciate you. Hey, Monica. Hey, Ben. Hey, look, I always, I always like seeing in person the people that, you know, you've been watching for a couple of years or something like that. And it's weird because you just, like I told John from KG Tropicals, I was like, every time I talk to you on the phone, you sound just like you do. Um, on video and it's funny to me i don't know why but, and and he'll he'll do the same the way he talks is just the way he talks it's like it, it's funny but seeing you and 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 uh at aqua shell i was like hey i saw you from i was with chattanooga ed and i saw you uh grabbing some b-roll and uh chattanooga was like dude you're just tall you can see everybody i was like yeah but that's ben ochart over there <laughs> we gotta go say what's up to him we kind of ran up on Ben, and Ben was looking like, "Hey, what's going on?" <laughs> I thought I thought you guys were the bouncers. You're kicking me out. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So, uh, um, first of all, how was your how was your flight home? Because I know you're you're Midwest, you're Nashville, and I'm <laughs> four hours, five hours away from me. How was you know? I was delayed, so. I heard your uh, intro. You know, I tried to get out, get out on the 7 p.m., and that was canceled. Fortunately, it was a standby for the 7, but I was actually reserved for the 10.30. Then okay. the 10.30 got delayed to 11.30. Oh, 
Oh. And then 11.50. I mean, I was thinking I might not get out tonight. And uh, to make a long story uh, short, by the time I was in bed, grateful that we got out at all. But it was it was about a little after 3 a.m. when I got in bed. Oh, my God. Yeah. And that's with the time change. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's a that's, that's a rough 4 a, one. Four a.m. Florida time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a rough one. <laughs> oh, it was man. it was rough. It was rough. I got a little a little nap in the middle of the day. Otherwise, okay. right now I'd be completely worthless. Oh my god! But, but I, uh, I I didn't get a lot done today. I unpacked. <laughs> <laughs> I still haven't done that. <laughs> I, got, I, got, I washed and got the t-shirt on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mr. Biz. <laughs> Right on. Represent. 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 You got to represent. Yeah, are you know. <laughs> That's great. Um, your thoughts on Aquashella? Everybody's wanting to know. Well, I, I, I loved Aquashella. It was a lot of fun. And um, I, um, you know, you, you, you like looking at the uh, at the equipment. You like meeting the vendors. I was very impressed with um, with some of the vendors. The the, the fellow that uh, was representing Extreme extreme foods he was just just a real just a real sweetheart of a gentleman uh took the time to talk with me and and uh it was real funny because um a fellow i spent some time with while i was there uh, jerry martin uh, we were hanging out and then jerry martin comes into john and lisa's talk and sits next to me and goes man i got a guy you got to meet you've got to meet this guy and uh so you know he takes me out there and, and of course, that's the guy that I've been talking to a little while earlier, which was the extreme guy. <laughs> like, <laughs> we know each other already. <laughs> but, uh, so, I, I so his we name is Andy. And, uh, and my, 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 I love meeting um, YouTubers that I had been following, uh, like Jay Wilson and, um, and of course, John and Lisa. And I guess she's Lisa Hudson now. Not to get, they got married. I didn't know that. But, right. uh, but yeah, the Hudsons. And yes. uh, and you know Zenzo, you know who had explosive growth. Uh, I remember mm -hmm. when he first got started. You know, meeting some of these guys, of course, yourself and Chattanooga. I mean, you guys. And and I tell you that the my my takeaway on the whole thing was the fish. The equipment was great, but it was the people. That's what made it so special for me. Was the the human connection, and it just reminding me of what a great group this fish keeping community is it, it really is a uh yeah every group has maybe a, an occasional jerk or troll or whatever but sure overall the people i ran into the people that came up to me and hey i've been following you for a while your channel and the ones that came over to the uh shishe uh booth to meet me and and they were just it was just so many nice people and um that that left the biggest impression on me of anything was just the that human contact. And of course, we've been scarred for human for human contact with all the mask and COVID nonsense, right? We've been we've been uh, kind of cut off in a way. So right. this was like my first major you know gathering of people in in quite a while. But anyway, it was just uh, the people were great. I mean, what a great community we belong to, really. You know what? I was I was saying the same thing. Somebody interviewed me. You know what? I found my first um, fan, <laughs> and it was it was funny, man. And it, because she was like, "Oh my God, you're you!" And I was like, "Who me?" <laughs> <laughs> she loves, she like, so cool like, when that so cool when that happens. <laughs> I'm like. You sure you're not looking for um, um, uh, 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 Ryan from uh, Wild Wildlife Tanks? Because uh, I mean, he's a little taller than me. But <laughs> she's like, "No, you." I was watching. I was watching you before I came down here. Can I get a picture? And I was like, "You know, I'm the I'm the biz." Okay, yeah, let's, this is happening. <laughs> yeah, it's so cool. It so fun. cool. Yeah. You realize how appreciative people are of of because um, you know you're when you're on this side of the of the camera, you, you know you get comments and stuff, but you don't really sure. get that live, that live sort of feedback. And and I tell you, I got I got reinvigorated. I, I had all kinds of ideas on the airplane and yes. all kinds of stuff, and it kind of fired me up. You know, because it's yes. uh, I mean, you know, I mean, people burn out in this in this in this whole arena. 
I mean, we know about the King Queen of King Queen. I mean, they just they just packed yeah. everything up, sold everything off, and you know, and and I remember Steve Poland, a yeah. uh, real big yeah. YouTuber. He was gone for a while, and even John and Lisa, they were gone for a while. You know, came yeah. back, and so it's uh, you need that to get you get fired up again. Absolutely, absolutely, and uh, my thoughts exactly because I was I was head into a, a video slump, but I I knew it was due to me finishing off summer. And, and with the students and I felt like when I get get ready to get in there, I'll be able to push out some more content, but definitely going down there, getting a, a, change, a change of scenery, um, coming out of this whole staying in the house for a year and a half and just getting out and, and seeing the people, uh, getting, that, getting that one person or a couple of people that recognize you really is like, man, it, it just makes you feel real good. Seeing all the fish tubers, you know, high five and taking pictures, just a real cool bunch of people. It, it, it really invigorates you. You're absolutely yep. right. Absolutely it was. Right. I bought one product. I bought one okay. product at Aquashella. And I'll I'll, uh, I'll reveal it on a video, but for your viewers, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what it is. It It's this divider. An actual snap-in divider. So you can take like a 29 and make it into two separate tanks instantly. What? And I, I I've been using things like uh, like diffusers, you know, like 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 light diffusers. Sure. This thing is custom made, custom made to snap in place, and it comes with clips and stuff. And it just you push it into the substrate. And oh, I just, wow. I, I just wish they had it for a fifty-five. And it, and they're they're designed to work. Uh, they're actually designed around Aquion tanks, but uh, maybe I should have grabbed two of them. But because I've got my uh, my red Jake right now, my Eureka red Jake in with a with a with a smaller fish, and at first they were getting along really well, like best best buddies. But today I noticed there's a couple marks on that on that other fish. Oh wow! Red fin red fin borley eye. So I can I can take this thing and just drop it right in and uh, put on the two little clips. Doesn't it doesn't go over the top at all? You can still put your lid on perfectly. What? And, uh, and that's it. I've got two tanks now. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, so I thought I thought that was a good I thought that was a good product. They had, they had great, uh, you know, scaping stuff, you know, like like uh, like wood and yeah. uh, like, like your your spider woods and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, but I, I really wasn't carrying a lot of stuff home. The um, oh the the o oh, is it Oase Oase filters? Those impressed awesome. me a lot out of Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, they're using mm -hmm. the um, the glass on their heaters. That is the same thing that Pyrex uses. Okay. So he said you got to You can drop them from like ten feet or something, and they don't break. And they oh, they, they run them hot, and then they put them in cold water, and they don't shatter. So I was really impressed by those heaters. Can't beat that. So and there's a few things that stood out at me during during the show. You know, products. Of course, you know, she said. I mean, I hung around that booth a lot, but I didn't know that they made the title. Uh, hang on backs. No, hang on back. I had no idea that they made those. And mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm probably going to pick up a, a couple, maybe a couple of wave makers from them. Well, I tell you what, I grabbed uh, two titles from um, uh, keepfishkeeping.com uh, for KG Tropicals. Um, and they are working swimmingly. I have my uh, 60 gallon and I'm turning into a discus tank. Um, you can control the flow of these things. You can, you can put the heater onto the onto the side of it so that it can still heat up the whole tank um, on my 75 gallon I've got uh, you know the title on there along with the penguin 350 and so I you know I got over filtrating from you Ben <laughs> <laughs> if you're, you if you're, heavily, if you're heavily stocked you need to <laughs> absolutely you need absolutely. To heavily filter I, was like, I, I hate the know, word you're, over no no you're not overstocked okay Oh, okay. Heavily stocked. Heavily stocked. Very good. Yes. And heavily filtered. Yeah. Yeah. You ask, how many fish can I put in there? I don't know. Yeah. But if you ask Ben, he'll say, how many ever you want, as long as you uh, have <laughs> a lot of filtration. Keep pulling those water changes closer together and make them bigger and bigger. Man, I'm trying Next to. Next thing you know, you've got a stream, basically. Look, I have my 75 gallon. I had two. 350 penguins on the back of it. And then I've got three 60 gallon sponge filters in there. <laughs> so, and I only have 
what about 15 uh peacocks in there i was making an ob peacock tank and i, I was I'm, i think i'm loaded i could still put you know five six seven more in there oh, yeah but they produce so much waste those fish they eat so they much really i heard they actually produce more uh waste in urine than other fish as a species they they're they, they produce high amounts of ammonia yeah they 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 are i i see myself having to uh clean their tank out more often than I want to. And they are some evil little SOBs. <laughs> they they, they uh, look like they're in perfect harmony for about four days. The next thing I know, somebody is getting chomped at the bit. Like it's Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I came home and my, my uh, Johnson and I, Pastor Columbus Johnson and I was hanging out here. There he is right there. It looks okay now. Mm -hmm. He was hanging here like head down in this plant here on the side. And I'm thinking, uh oh, what happened? And it, it's just someone opens up a can of, you know, whoop ass on, on one of the fish <laughs> and, and then and then it stops and you don't see it. So you have no idea. And the uh, Skittles, my OB and my Bicolor 500, both of them recovered from a beating. Fortunately, like, I mean, they were shredded. I was about sure. to pull them out and then they started okay. to kind of look better, look better. I did some water changes. But man, oh man, I, I tell people, look, cichlid keeping, uh, African cichlid keeping is not for everybody um, because and, and you've got to have a tolerance for some crazy stuff. I was just talking to a lady and she didn't know what type that she had. And she was actually on the plane and uh, she was like, yeah, it was a light blue one and a yellow one. And next thing I know, they're just going at each other. And I was like, you probably got you some Mbuna in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the they, they're pretty like, to look at, but they go hard on each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that and that's that's what you what you can get at the big box stores. You know, they've got the labs and the you know the yellow tails, and yeah, you bring that bring those home, and they get into it with each other. Maybe she has a blue dolphin in there. I mean, who knows? I mean, they oh, start right. going. Forget about it. It's a fact. Is it? It's definitely a fact. Now, when your when yours go at it, um, and I know you say you're going to pull them out. Is that your first response to pull them out, and and then do you medicate? I keep a close look. I, I keep a close eye on them, but I have found that with fresh water, the, the the fins will usually heal up very very quickly. I watch them closely to make sure there's no infection. But uh, you know, if I notice anything unusual, but if it's just cuts or or nips, and mm -hmm. there's some fin missing because of the nipping, I'll just provide them with a lot of fresh water, good filtration, and keep a real close eye on them. If anything starts to appear like it could be an infection, I'll hit it with some. API general cure, maybe some Marison. But I found that those that if your fish are, are are healthy and robust to begin with, they have a very fast recovery period. If they're already weakened or have been under stress for too long or your water quality wasn't that good, uh, they'll go downhill real fast, might not make it. But yeah. Um I almost treat them like well, I guess with the tank bullies, you I, what I do is I try to separate them out for. And what, it's usually my OB, my blueberry, my blueberry OB. Um, he now has some competition. This other blueberry is colored up and they uh, they just seek and destroy, seek and destroy. I, I, I snatch him out. And I, I kind of put him away for like maybe about a week, if, I, if, if not yeah. more. Because <laughs> they go hard on each other, seriously. Yeah. You know, I wish um, I, I I wish I could I could give people uh, an anecdote. You know, some kind of a tip apart from just separating or getting rid of a real jerk. But I actually I showed you that 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 thumbnail of that video that's coming out about aggression and lies. <laughs> The, yes. <laughs> the title of the of the video is everything you've heard about cichlid aggression is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I have tried everything. I've lowered temperatures. I've rearranged the aquarium. I've get, done the timeouts. I've yeah. thought I've removed everything that looked like a, like it could be a female. And if a fish wants to kill, it'll just keep killing. You know, you'll take them out and put them back. You'll keep killing. Oh, uh, yeah. It, it, hey, John. John and Lisa, hello, buddy. Hey, Vinny. <laughs> Man, you got some great people in this stream. Yeah. Patty's petite tanks is the uh, thorn in my side there when she gets to acting up. But yeah. <laughs> oh, what's going on? Thank you for coming through. Everybody, thank you guys. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. When it, I, you know, I listened to your streams to figure out what, what all haven't you done for the, for, for the, uh, for the cichlid that just will not stop murdering. <laughs> and you just tell everybody the same thing. It just, it, it's going to happen. You just got to be ready for it. I, I think you said, you know, one day they're all swimming together, but as soon as one of them turns his back. <laughs> and sometimes I've noticed, um, and this has become more, I don't know why more recently, but uh, in the dark, you know, they, you would think, well, turn the lights out. You know, that's nothing I've tried, you know, okay. Leave the lights out for longer periods of time. They just become, they just become, you know, in the dark Ravenous. pillars. Oh man. Rabbit. You know what? <laughs> they took out, they took out my, my Pleco, my Pleco. Oh, I've had them for, oh God. He used to be, I don't even want to think about it. He used to always in my live streams be the front and center clean off the algae and now I've got to manually do more of it but he used to do his job I had the lights out maybe for two days straight because and when I when I when I when I turned the lights back on I looked and I was like something different about this tank and I was like I knew it was death but I didn't think it was him I was looking I saw his tail peeking out of the out of his favorite rock decor. And uh, I was like, well, he's cool. Uh, it's gotta be somebody else. And then when I looked on the side of the tank, I just saw his belly just eating out. I was like, oh, not my, your armor, your catfish, your armor. You have so many weapons. <laughs> How they found, can, they found the soft spot. Too. They found the soft spot. They'll go after the eyes, mm -hmm. and then they'll uh, flip them over. Is yeah. it a bushy nose, a, a bristle nose? Yeah, it was a sail fin. Yeah, I I did not have luck with sail fins. I've had luck with bristle noses and your okay. standard green plecos. Okay. The problem with the standard greens, of course, is you know they get they just become enormous and they become the aggressor. Right. So I've stopped getting the standard greens and and I've gone with the. Uh, the um, bristle noses and they've, they've been okay and they don't get too big. Okay. All right. Um, currently, what would be your, what's your favorite tank in your room right now? My Are favorite? You, um, uh, well, I love them all for different reasons. Okay. And, um, but I've got to say this one back here, I mean, let me turn the camera here. Here, I'll solo you out. You don't mind looking through the microphone there? Well, there you go. Just the tilt, and I can see nothing. Sorry. <laughs> Here, I can open it up. Yeah. There you go. That tank right there. Okay. All right. There we go. But it's, right, uh, that tank is uh, uh, a custom-made tank from from uh, from my friends over at Glass Cages, who were actually at Aquashella. I was able to have lunch with Joe, one of the co-owners of Glass Cages at Aquashella. And um, I made that tank uh, to fit the, the dimensions of a piece of furniture. But then after they brought the tank and we really, we really confronted the weight of the tank. I mean, we're talking about a thousand pounds when it was full. It was about 300, almost 300 empty. They use an extra thick glass. Oh, wow. And so it took four of us to get it up on the stand. And that's just a 90 gallon tank. You wouldn't think it would take that, right? Right. Four people to get that thing up there. And then you imagine you put the, you put the decor, the rocks substrate. Oh, We're going to be up around, well, up around a thousand pounds. So uh, <laughs> the, the furniture, my Ikea piece of furniture, I didn't trust. For <laughs> <laughs> I'd always be sleeping kind of with one eye open, you know, waiting to hear the right. crack. Right? <laughs> so anyway, they made a, uh, they made a stand for me. And now I've got a couple of viejas in there, some geophagus, some severums. Okay. I've got a, a yellow. I've got a, a red spotted severum that I and I got a lycaria, a, a paratilapia polini, mm -hmm. and there's a, a little Jack Dempsey I just put in there. Okay. And uh, now I come into this room from stairs up up above. Yeah. And every time I open that door and start to come down, that that red spotted severum comes to the top of the tank to look at me. Oh, he's. <laughs> yeah. He's like, hey, you, you coming down? Yeah, you got, you, you, you got some pellets. 
<laughs> Watchdog, bow wow. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, he's, he's, uh, I don't know if it's the vibration or what, but he 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 he, he knows I'm coming. It's awful. Let me chase the camera angle there. Don't get all the trash on my desk. <laughs> Projects. <laughs> Um, what do you have in the, in the works? Any uh, uh, bigger tanks, newer tanks? Uh, oh yeah, pitch? oh yeah. <laughs> I know you don't want to give up, give I've up your secrets. One of the things I was discussing with Joe, the uh, co-owner of Glass Cages, was the delivery of the two ten. The two ten is a uh, was a custom made white frame. It's got a white frame on it, and yeah. it's a uh, pretty dope actually. And and. It, it was a, a tank that for people that saw the video of my my tour of glass cages it was one of the tanks that someone had ordered and somehow the deal didn't work or whatever so it's back there in the warehouse and I they said hey buddy you know give me a deal and uh, <laughs> and he did he gave me a good deal oh, wow. and and uh, and I also had a lot of help from my from the my channel sponsor which, which is um, the cyclic shack over in Arizona Shout out to the cichlid chat. Uh, yeah, James Largo, only the best cichlids, my friend. The yeah, uh, you, Shack Attack 10 for 10%. Shack Attack 10 for 10%. All lowercase, Monica. by the way. Shack Who's Attack 10 in the chat for me for 10% off. Yeah, Shack Attack 10, 10% off at the cichlid shack. And uh, if you want to get uh, fully colored up, uh, fully, cuttered, fully colored up uh, cichlids, that you know they're guaranteed, like you know they're male. I mean, I've done the raising, you know, the fry and bringing them up, and and you end up with all females and things like that, or or you wait three years and that eye biter turns out to be a female. <laughs> and as I got older, I realized I don't want to spend more, that much time <laughs> <laughs> of your life I'm, waiting on the second. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I might never find. I might never find out if this is a male. Or not. <laughs> Anyway, so what was the original question before I got diverted here? Um, I think that I think it was your favorite tank, and then we went on from there. Well, I think right now the ninety. Okay, all the right, 90. and and um, then pretty soon is going to be that all white. That, that, <laughs> that two ten, we'll see. I've got a lot of ideas. I got a, a sump and overflow box. I've got uh, I got two canisters. I'm staring at right now. I've I've got oh, wow. a lot of things going through my head. I've got a blend of substrate. I'm going to be putting together that includes aragonite to help buffer the water. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it, it's going to okay. be a, it's going to be a fun project. I may end up taking both of these two these two tanks and moving them here and putting okay. the, ten, the two ten against this wall. That's it. So um, that's, so that's a big project. Right you you know how big that project is. You got to oh, drain yeah. the tanks down and uh, and hope that you can move them with maybe an inch or two of water and the substrate, which is a lot of weight. And so I need uh, two guys in a van but, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll go. <laughs> to move it 10 feet in the garage. <laughs> but, yeah. I'd, I'd love to have uh, or maybe get put a rack over here, a rack on this side and put the 55s on top of each other and uh, make the 210 more the showcase, you know, behind me. Oh. Oh, so yeah, that's, that's definitely got to be it. Anyway. Yeah. This, so I've got a lot of, a lot of, a lot of stuff, always something. Or something yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the move. It, that, that's the beauty of fish keeping. It just never stops. It just doesn't stop. Yeah. And if you've got African cichlids, you've got stuff going on whether you want it or not. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> I, I just glanced and I was like, I have two holders already, so <laughs> I got to get them going. Yeah. Um, speaking of, um, what what is probably one of your recommended starter fish? I have, I, like I said, you know, I'm trying to reach out to to a younger younger crowd and and try to get them into fish keeping and be the future of fish keeping, what would be your, uh, I ask everybody, what's their starter, starter fish? Well, if somebody was just starting up, I think I, I, I I'd tell them to, to start with something where the setbacks are going to, are, are not going to accumulate. I mean, you could be a very experienced fish keeper and have African cichlids and suffer severe setbacks because of just the aggression, right? So let, let's remove that X factor entirely from the equation for the new guy or new gal. And let let let's have them accumulate a series of of victories, you know, in the hobby, and mm -hmm. without the setback. So let's get them, let's get them into some, um, maybe some some docile, maybe some lemon tetras, 
maybe some um, Rasboras. Okay. Some maybe some Cardinals or just some regular neon Tetras. Okay. If they, if they want to. You start getting into angels and something like tiger barbs. You're starting to get into the into the nip territory. Nips, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. But, you know, kind of keep it keep it as 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 friendly as, as as can be. Throw some plants in there. That'll help with their with you know with their nitrates. Uh, put mm -hmm. a cleanup crew in there, and yeah. um, you know. But I would say you know, my fr my first fish were uh, neons and rasboras, and I'm talking. I'm I'm like seven years old. Oh wow! Okay. Neons and rasboras, and, and I can still remember that little rasbora. I just couldn't believe the, the the pattern on them. I was just fascinated by them, and uh, yeah, I think maybe go after a little planted planted situation with some with a community fish. Throw a couple okay. snails in there, you know. Okay, and and that'll be a gr a great way to convey to especially fourteen and fifteen year olds who may have at seven year old got a beta and left it in the bowl, got a goldfish, left it in the bowl and try to get them into um, actually really getting into it. Um, my first time getting uh, rasboras was when I uh, inherited this community tank uh, due to the pandemic. Um, well, it's in there with my golden dojo loaches. Uh, I have some Harley Quinn, some Harley Quinns in there and some brilliance. And they are they're wonderful. So I, I would definitely, I'm, I'm on board with the Rasbora. They seem to be really hardy. They seem to um, be able to withstand, you know, a lot more than others. But you know what I haven't had luck with? I had, I've been buying blue neons like they're going out of style, and I do not know what's going on. My blue neons, have, I bought some Harley Quinns in here and some red and blue Colombiana uh, Tetras and, um, some Julii, uh, Corey, Corey uh, Doris, and I had like 13 uh, blue neons and they just didn't take. And I was, this was gonna be my discus tank, but I might have to get rid of those, um, those red and blue Colombian Tetras. They seem like they, <laughs> when, when it comes to the food. Yeah. You know, we all have that one, one fish that we can't quite get wits around. You know, mine is the rams. I love rams. Mm -hmm. And when I was keeping discus, I put rams in there with them and I just couldn't, they wouldn't last that long. You know, I, it, it was, I finally stopped buying them and I don't know if it was because I wasn't keeping the water warm enough or maybe too warm for the discus or too warm for the rams. I don't know. But, um, but it was, it was rough. I, I couldn't, I, and I love, I love rams, blue rams, gold rams, German rams, right? They're beautiful fish and mm -hmm. uh, couldn't, couldn't, couldn't quite get them to last. There might be some, I'm not familiar with the, with the, what you're talking about are the, the the blue neons. I'm not familiar with that fish, but okay. uh, I, I imagine that there might be something. You might want to see what their their pH or temperature recommended temperature or per, pH parameters are. Mm -hmm. you know, there might be something. Maybe your water's a little bit too hard, or yeah, we do something real subtle like that. Have, you know, we definitely have hard water here. Um, you know what? I went back to the same store and then I had called a different store and he was saying that the neons that are coming into this area um, are not the best. Like he said, he thinks it's a problem with the stock when they're being shipped here. And he said he wouldn't sell them if, cause he can notice if there's an issue, whereas other places may. Um, and uh, so I was thinking maybe that might have been an issue because everything else is flourish. I've got two Farewella catfish in here, um, and, and and they've been they've been having the time. Uh, it's playing it, and, and it's good to go. And and so maybe that might be it too. Yeah, you could just have a bad a bad line. Yeah, yeah, bad line. That happens yeah. too. Yeah, I think I'm gonna try and plant a tank. I want to uh, I, I want to take a tank to a point where it can be as self sustaining as possible. Okay. Okay. Deep substrate plants, cleanup crew. Yeah. Uh, you know, and where, where it can go for six weeks without a water change. Okay. Something like that because it's got a lot of oxygen being produced by plants. Sure. It's got, you know, plants absorbing a lot of the junk and, you know, something like that. Try and get some kind of an, an a balanced ecosystem that, that, uh, yeah, just, just to, just to try something different just for the heck of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that'd be fun. And, and I, my first time jumping into plants, I just 
I, I came to the to the chat and I came and went to uh, my uh, my aquarium cu um, club and I was like, listen, I haven't done plants before. I usually go fake. I want to try some live plants. Give me something that a kid could just plant and it'll go. And so they gave me maybe about eight different plants that you could put into an aquarium where, you know, you don't need a specialized bulb and you don't have to spend money on um, flourish or food or anything like that get it some of it you'll um attach to wood and some of it you can put in the substrate and he said just let it go so uh, i chopped this one full of full of plants which i really need some more and if you're going to do an ecosystem you, you, you're probably going to have more plants than fish in that thing it seems like <laughs> you need a lot <laughs> like a forest <laughs> yeah yeah I, so i have um some corkscrew uh val um some AR Mini, uh, some Anubis, some Java Fern, um, Horns Wart, and you know stuff like that. So uh, just just threw it in and, and see where I can go with it. So <laughs> I, well, I was told Anubis. I was told by some pretty reputable uh, fish people that uh, names you'd recognize that Anubis was. Um, was okay with African cichlids because it was bitter mm -hmm. and uh, went out and, and spent a hundred dollars so that you folks wouldn't have to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Um, hey Lisa, how you doing? It was, it was a guy. What's going on Looney? Um, it was uh, a, a, a guy that had Anubis. The, the, uh, the root stem was that long and by the big around the re re zone, I think they go the rhizome, yeah, rhizome, rhizome, yeah. And it is, and it's still flourishing. The leaves on this thing are huge, and you probably can't see it like from there. But I was, I was, I had to get it. I was like, man, that's the biggest Anubis I've seen. <laughs> yeah, they're amazing. I had, I had some. Um, you, if you go back into my videos, you'll see a video called "The Truth About Plants and African Cichlid Tank." I had some uh, type of Anubias that had leaves that were like tobacco leaves. I mean, they were massive. It was beautiful. I had a whole variety of them, and it was okay while the while the cichlids were small. But as they got older, they started to slowly slowly shred them. And uh, yeah, they might be bitter, but I'll tell you some fish have no memories when it comes to plants. Mm -hmm. But oh, that's bitter. I spit it out. Oh, look, a plant. <laughs> And then pop it back in. Yeah, yeah they go all dory on it. <laughs> they do the same thing with fecal matter. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ooh. I mean, food. Oh, look, yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Exactly. <laughs> Man, that tastes familiar. <laughs> hey, that's doo doo, baby. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, what about a one? What's one of your biggest tank disasters? Well, I got several. I've got. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hey, it's always when good I, to see that the pros have had problems too. <laughs> yeah. When I was learning, when I was learning about sumps, I I, uh, I destroyed a wood floor. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> It's a few ways you can learn about things. You know, you can go in, jump in, and see what happens. Right. Or you can like do a little research and then do it. I did the jump in way, and, <laughs> <laughs> and I ran way too much water on it, and I just flooded everything. Once you get it dialed in, it, they become very hard to overflow. Once you dial in a sump, it, one of the misconceptions about sumps is that they they will overflow and flood your. They don't do that if you have them dialed in right. But I didn't have it dialed in right, and I uh, ended up having to pay a lot of money because I was leasing that place. And um, but probably overall, the biggest disaster has to be the um, I hurried up, I hurried up a quarantine on a fish I bought, and I put him into the main tank too soon, and I ended up with a colomaris infection that uh, wiped out fifty percent of my stock. Oh, which I consider my. to be lucky because some people oh, lose all their stock with colomeris. Oh, geez. so I was able to get a hold of some Fritz uh, Marison Plus, it was called. And I tell you that that um, there were other things I tried first, like like gentle type type things, like um, 
you know those blue bottles that that are that are made primarily of leaves and things. You know what I'm talking about. They they mm -hmm. supposed to treat fin rot and stuff like that. Fin rot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. And uh, Pima P Pima Cure. Yeah, Pima. Or is it Prima? Or is it? Yeah, there's a couple of them. A couple of them. Anyway, uh, Mila Fix and Pima Fix. There you go. Fix. Yeah. There you go. That's it. Yeah. And um, so the pictures on the back of those bottles looked like what was going on with my fish. So I used that stuff. And uh, it did absolutely nothing. All, all it did was was get the the uh, Colomeros to take a stronger hold of the tank. And um, anyway, so it, finally, I, I I I came across the right medication and was able to stop it in its tracks. But man, that 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 is a nasty disease. And it, it was on me, you know. Yeah. I, I wanted to get that fish out of quarantine, put him in the show tank, and. Uh, and I went, you know, shorter. I went like two and a half, three weeks instead of my usual four weeks or more. And it cost me. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, There's a whole video series called My Fish Are Dying where I go <laughs> over the whole the whole thing. Because you got to put it out there. When you're on YouTube, everybody's going to know anyway, right? They're going to go, hey, whatever happened? Didn't you have more fish in that tank? Right. So, you, right. <laughs> so you might as well get in front of it. So I put out a, 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 a few videos that just showed the whole process and went over it and and hopefully prevent someone else the grief I went through. Now, do you do any actual fishing at all? Well, it's funny you should say that. I just got a text from my son who's coming uh, to visit. Okay. And uh, and we have a lot of uh, lakes and ponds and streams and rivers and, you know, all over. You know, sure. I mean, I can get in my car in 10 minutes, be casting into a stream. That oh, sounds great. So, um so I think we're going to fish probably on Sunday. Okay. And I haven't fished right. in years. I haven't fished in years, but okay. I love lure fishing. I love, uh, you know, I love to, to fish with bait as well, but I, I, I love casting a spoon or a spinner out there. Sure. And uh, I've done some deep sea fishing. I've done some fishing off the piers of California. Outstanding. And, uh, I think a license here is like 10 bucks for, you know, 20 bucks for a year. I think in California, it's like 30 for a day. <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> so it's a good deal here in Tennessee, right? <laughs> uh, last time you went fishing, what, what do you what what did you catch? And do you catch cook and, and cl uh, catch clean and cook, or do you catch and, and toss back? We'd catch catch and release. You know, we were catching okay. little mackerel, little, uh, ma mackerels and okay. uh, you know, things like that. And occasionally, we we would catch a uh, if we if we catch a flounder and he was legal, you know, legal length, we would keep him. And, uh, but most of the stuff you catch off the coast of California, you, you probably don't want to eat you okay. know, just because of the pollution levels, you know, all of our, all of the, uh, you know, of course all the sewer systems are treated and then drain out into that area. So you get, you, okay. yeah, yeah. I wouldn't trust the fish there. Now the lake fish here, I've never, I've never been real big on the taste of trout or bass. Yeah, okay. So, well, I'll probably catch and release here too. Okay. Just for the sport right. of it. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. I like that. Uh, what would you say to your 25-year-old self? I'm sorry, say again? What would you say to your 25-year-old self? 25-year-old self? Um, mm -hmm. as, as soon as you hear about YouTube, uh, get a channel going. <laughs> <laughs> There's a thing coming called YouTube. Jump in early <laughs> jump in hard. Do it now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's too late. Go don't now. Wait till, don't wait till you're sixty. To, uh, <laughs> but um, and and of course, buy a lot of Apple stock. <laughs> so you don't exactly, know what this is. Right? You know what Apple is. You don't know what stock is. But buy a lot of Apple stock. <laughs> that would be your Marty McFly moment. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And and, and, and Dod, you know, Dodgers World Series 2021. I um. I think I would say, you know, uh, pursue pursue your love. You know, I when you start having kids, I have four kids, and and um, and I had to pursue a mix of of my passion, but I also had to had to pursue, you know, the Benjamins. Uh -huh. I mean, that, that's just the reality of it. You got four kids, and um, you know, a house, a wife. I mean, you need you need money. Yes, and absolutely. so um, and there were times in my career where I I probably might have wanted to pursue something else but i kind of stuck with what i knew and uh um anyway it's all hindsight but yeah follow your passion 
and just make sure it, it's uh, uh, you somehow can. If it's a passion that makes you money, that's awesome. <laughs> yes, absolutely, absolutely. Well, Ben, it is it is it is great, and uh, I know the busy fish chat has been waiting. They've been waiting for this moment right here. <laughs> oh boy! <Uh-oh. laughs> Can somebody please tell Ben what he's in store for? He is a huge channel, but he's still gonna get it. <laughs> Welcome to the hot spot, Ben. Welcome to the hot spot where the spot gets hot. We're gonna start you off with your faves. This is the part of the segment where you just let me know what your favorites are. Are you ready, sir? And yeah, yeah, we shoot. <laughs> All right. Uh, favorite fish of all time. Ooh, and already, man, oh man, so <laughs> many, so many. Um, uh, auto fairness, tetrastigma. There it is. You heard it here first. Auto fairness, tetrastigma. He might be, he's in here somewhere. Come okay. here, buddy. Gorgeous fish. Yeah, loves the tetrastigmas. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, favorite filtration since you're filtration king. What's your favorite now? Man, oh man! <laughs> you know it, it's uh, it's hard to say because each application you dial it into the to you know what you're doing right. Like on that two ten, my favorite filter there would be a sump. On okay. these guys, you know, hang on okay. back does the job. So, okay. right. uh, but I'll tell you something. Um, those little expert matic filters. I was thinking about it today. Mm-hmm. All I've got on, on this, all I've, all I've got back here with all these African cichlids is two little expert Maddox. And and they're keeping that tank looking really, really good, creating lots of water circulation because they're power head sponges. And I can service one of those filters in five minutes. Start oh, to finish. Pull the bottom off. Squeeze the sponges out of tank water. Put them back in. Snap it back on, and I'm done. Oh wow! And so, um, so you got to love that. Absolutely. And now, on the other extreme, you got to love a sump because you get that extra water volume, and you know, the solution to dilution, is, the solution to pollution is dilution. Yeah. So more water <laughs> volume, right? So, if you're going to have a real heavily stocked tank, super heavily stocked, and and it's a big, let's say you got a 200, you got 45 cichlids in there. Uh, man, yeah, consider a 40, 50 gallon sump. Okay, very nice. Have you heard of a hang on the back canister? No. Somebody was just telling me, I want to say if it's Jeffrey Watts, I think he had got a hang on the back canister, if I'm not mistaken. Jeffrey, if you're still here, let me know about that. We're going to move on. Um, Two of your favorite fish that are fish friends, fish friendly. You can put them in the tank together. You see them all the time. No problem. Well, it's been so long since I had a fish like that. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, you know, I'm like a warden. in down here two in the morning with a flashlight. Hey, knock it off. <laughs> um, red cap, Lethran Ops red cap. Okay. Lethanops red cap. Beautiful fish. Uh, could get along with any other, you know, docile type fish. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You know. And and you know what? There are some fish that you call predators, but they're kind of goofy. Okay. And I like them a lot. Like like for me, the bu- Buchochromus notatania and the and also your sand divers, right? Your frostochromus. Okay. Uh, those I think are are like your sand divers. They're just like big goofballs. <laughs> you swim back and forth, back and they and they get that metallic blue and green going on. Mm-hmm. That makes no sense at all. It's just random. <laughs> Every one of them is different. Where well, you can get five or six of these uh, autopharynx tetrastigmas, and they all will be very similar in pattern and color. Okay, uh, it'd be hard to find two sand divers that are the same. And yes, if you ever seen one go under the sand, where just an eye and a fin is sticking out, sure, and he's checking you out with one eye, it's absolutely hilarious. 
<laughs> so I, so that, that that's kind of the grouping there. Okay, very cool. Uh, your favorite bottom feeder? Well, you know, I, I, I love the the bristle nose. You know, the bushy nose plecos. Sure. I also uh, love some of the quarry cats. You know, but I haven't had quarry cats in a while because they they become a quick meal for a cichlid. Unfortunately, usually true. I'm heard there's exceptions to everything, I guess. But um, <laughs> and oh, and of course, and I guess you'd consider them bottom fish. I mean, I if you go back to my older videos, I had Los Tres Amigos. Those three mm -hmm. clown loaches, those clown yeah. loaches gave me so much fun and joy, yeah. especially when they would stack on top of each other. They would sleep on top of each other like bunk beds. Yeah. And I sometimes they would they would um, yeah. lay on their side like they take a nap. Mm -hmm. And I'd go get the net and go, damn, you know, I lost one of my clown loaches. And he would just take off. And I got <laughs> to the point where I, you know, I knew, you know, I knew he was just right. But they just go. I had one that would always go to the same spot and then he would just tip over. And I don't, I think they thought they were cichlids. They would go right to the top and eat like everybody else. And they, you know, those clown loaches have those, those, uh, you know, they, they have those like, barbs. like barbs. Yeah. And so the, yeah. the African cichlids want nothing to do with them. Yeah. 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 So I have one left over. I had a uh, ick on my, on the clown loach problem. I had like seven of them and I uh, was able to save like three of them. And they've been getting pretty big with these African cichlids. I love clown loaches. Absolutely. Yeah, they're great fish. Absolutely. They really are clowns, actually. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Favorite breakfast food? You know, you're talking to a guy that likes to eat. You know that. Hey, look, you hey, <laughs> preach it to the choir, brother. Preach it to the choir. <laughs> you know, my, the, um, my son the other day, uh, one of my boys was visiting. I've got two boys. And one of them was visiting, and he introduced me to um, – Chicken and waffles. That was pretty damn good. <laughs> yeah. This is your first time having chicken and waffles? You, you wouldn't oh. think. You wouldn't think. Oh, but, man. Um, southern, yeah. southern boy like that? Yeah. <laughs> That's but I tell you, my favorite, my favorite breakfast food, and, and, and she's not here to hear it, so I'm not trying to butter her up or anything, but okay. my wife makes, a, my wife makes a, an omelet for me that, uh, you know, she'll put some veggies in it. She'll put some bacon. She'll put some uh, little sour cream. I mean, it's amazing. Outstanding. Outstanding. Yeah. Uh, what is your favorite fast food joint? Well, it, um, in and out uh, back in California was oh my, my go-to go if I wanted oh. a good burger. It's a good oh burger. God. You had one? Oh, my God. Every time it's, we go to Vegas, in and out It's a good oh. burger. That's right. That, that right was the first place outside of California they had them was in Vegas. Over oh the Caesars God. food court. And, it's unbelievable. Um, so that would be my pit, probably my now out here, you know you've got like uh, there's some barbecue joints that are really good. Okay. And okay. so I'll have a, I'll have a I'll have a different favorite for you in about a maybe about a year. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I'm trying to now, hit are you, are you are you down south enough to have a Whataburger? <laughs> I see him around. You like him? Oh my god! I would. <laughs> I would only inch what a burger over in and out because it's bigger, but it is the is. If you haven't tried it, try it. I am gonna try it now. Okay, oh, you gotta try it. Gotta try it. Yeah, and then you'll be you'll be you'll be caught in between in and out and what a burger. What a burger. That's, that's a good place to be caught. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> what about your favorite food to cook? Ooh, favorite food to cook. Well, I I uh, make some food like that is ethnic, um, like what is called platano maduros or tostones, which are the large green, the large green bananas, and you uh, you can cut them up and fry them, and they have a sweet variety and a not sweet variety. Okay. And uh, one of the things that sort of plantain or plantain. Okay, there's a okay. platano and uh, yeah. something that shocked some of the people at Aquashella that came up to me who had an accent, and I would tell them where you're from, and they would say, Oh, you know, I'm Puerto Rican. And then I would go, Eres Puerto Rican, yo soy Puerto Rican, yo también, Borinque. And they would go, What? And all of a sudden, we're <laughs> off, right? Talking about Puerto Rican food. Okay. So, uh, anyway, yeah, some making 
making ethnic Puerto Rican food, I think, is my favorite. Outstanding. Outstanding. I uh, did not even know that about you. You know what? The first time I heard you speak something that I didn't understand was when I was sitting next to you and I was waiting on my lift and you were talking to the uh, one guy um, and you had said something to him and I just kind of like looked at you and I was like, Man, what? <laughs> oh, when we were sitting down the lobby. Yes. Yeah. 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 He was, he was one of the Puerto Rican guys that came up to me and he, he was like, what, what do you mean you're Puerto Rican? What? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you and I was like, "What is Ben talking? What is the words that he's saying?" <laughs> yeah, my first language. <clears throat> That's what's up. Yeah. That's uh, what's your favorite restaurant to go to? Man, there's there's a uh, um, there's a place in Los Angeles called Rayos. Okay. And you feel like you're going into a 1930s, 1920s gangster place. Really? Yeah, they got the big, uh, the big Metro D. You call his name. His name is uh, Johnny Roast Beef. <laughs> <laughs> and and he goes like from head to neck, and it's just all one sort of torpedo. And, he, and he's hilarious. He's totally hilarious. And the food and the uh, the beverages, you know, the the best uh, best margarita you can imagine. That's and, it. Huh? Uh, Anyway, and they make their pasta right there. They make the ravioli right there. They only use the best cuts of meat. I mean, it's unbelievable. Called Rayos in Hollywood. You have to know where it is. I mean, it's kind of hidden between some of the studios. And okay. uh, those those are the best. Probably, those are the best places. Those back in the wall dives and drives. That's right. Well, the local locals know about it. Yeah. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, your favorite wrestler. <clears throat> favorite what? Wrestler. Wrestler, man, oh man, you know, it's got to be Hulk Hogan if I had to pick one. Yes, I mean, the Hulk was just so entertaining and he was like, like such a massive specimen, right? Sure. You're like, Holy Absolutely. shit, how can anyone beat this guy? <laughs> the must, the must from the mustache on down to the 24 inch pythons, brother. <laughs> yeah, he was, he, he was just like this. It was like, I don't know, it, it's got like a freak show, but you're kind of impressed and you're kind of. It, so yeah, he was he was kind of fun, and I, I, I haven't, you know, when I was a kid, I used to watch it a lot. You Absolutely. know, we had uh, the Golden was it Golden George or the anyway, and and the Spanish community. When I was growing up, my parents used to watch the Mexican uh, Spanish TV Canal Twenty Cuatro or, or Twenty Two. So I would come into L.A. and they mm -hmm. had Lucha Libre. Lucha Libre, okay. Yeah, yeah, we had like Mil Mascaras, a thousand masks, and we had these guys that were real famous in the Latin community, and they were like the, they were like superstars, you know. <laughs> Looney Tunes says it got Rouse on my list now. I'm 20, 30 minutes away from Hollywood. There you go. R A O apostrophe S. Make there a reservation. Try the margarita. It's eighteen dollars, but you're not going to care. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be the best thing you ever tasted, huh? Yeah. Kenny E. All right, moving on. Favorite type of music? Well, um, you ride my car for 10 minutes, you're going to hear, you, you're going to hear cello. You're, you're going to hear, um, you're going to hear um, jazz. You're going to hear very hard rock. You're going to hear r and uh, I mean, I grew up with with uh, Led Zeppelin and Motown. I mean, and then it's taken off from there. So, oh wow, yeah. So, so, it's a, so you 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 name it. I have a lot of lot of, uh, and it's funny. One of my four kids is just like that. Him and I have very similar. Very, you'll you'll never know what's going to come up next on 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 his playlist. It's just like okay. me. My That's wife, awesome. my wife, you're going to get all country. Okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. That's awesome. Very cool. Uh, favorite soft drink? Favorite soft drink? Yeah. Uh, I, I like a I like a Diet Coke or a Diet Pepsi. Okay. okay. From a fountain. I don't drink it out of the can because I don't feel good with that aspartame. Okay. But on the fountains, they don't put aspartame. They use something else. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm a Arnold Palmer type of guy. Give me a sweet tea mixed with lemonade. Well, yeah, you know, I like those. Yeah, you should try. You would try uh, Steve's, Steve's teas. Uh -uh. 
Yeah, you can get them at uh, Whole Foods or uh, Trader Joe's, I think. Steve's. Okay. They have a lemonade combination like that's really good. Okay. All right. Yeah. Definitely got to check that out. 50 50. Yeah. Very good. Favorite holiday? Well, um, 10 years ago, I would have said Christmas because of all the joy, you know, with the kids and everything. But Thanksgiving has become the, the holiday where the family comes together. And uh, they fly in from all over. So I would say, uh, yeah, I would say Thanksgiving at this point because it because it draws it draws it draws us all together. And now the family spread out. You know, I've got San Francisco, I've got Philadelphia, Seattle. He goes back and forth. And sure. Anyway, so it's real nice to kind of get us all in one spot. So Thanksgiving is the one that does that. All right. Uh, favorite app on your phone? I'm sorry. I guess again, I'm sorry. favorite app on your phone. Well, I've got an app that is um, that lets me take take a picture and uh, and cut out a piece of it. And, okay. and I, I showed you earlier what I'd done. Oh yeah, like like I took my old my old hawk, the uh, old Malawi hawk. Look at that thing. God. <laughs> that's, a, that's a that's a Malawi hawk that's yawning, and that's an old uh, Maduka white lips. So this this app lets me pull pull out a piece of a picture and have it look pretty good and pop it onto something else, right? And if you're a content creator, you can get this app for free. It's it's called P I C S capital A R T Pixart. Pixart, that's the app that I use the most. Pixart. Pixart. Okay. And then my other one has got to be uh, Pronto, P-R-O-N-T-O. That's where you do all your, you can do your uh, your lettering and things like that on your on your uh, mm -hmm. thumbnails. Okay. And then YouTube Studio. I'm on that thing all the time. <laughs> okay. yeah. uh, favorite celebrity crush? Celebrity crush? Oh, man. <laughs> I had any of those. Let me see. If I had to pick one that one that really rattled your snake. <laughs> well, you know, when I was growing up, when I was a kid and and uh, and uh was uh was just all full of hormones. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we had some uh, real pretty actresses running around, sure. but um, there was one that I remember when I was about eleven or twelve, and her name was Hope Lang, okay. and it was like, oh, my, of course now she's probably a hundred. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think I think uh, Jessica Biel's kind of cute. Yeah, yeah, that's and. A who else? I like a nice Jennifer Aniston myself. Yeah, yeah, and she's got some fire. Did you did did you see uh, Horrible Bosses? Oh, yeah, absolutely! It's like oh my god, how about the outtakes from that movie? I mean, they were oh, just <laughs> it was. <laughs> hey, she was really on. on, on. Oh God, that yes, yeah, yeah. She yeah, was amazing. Makes, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're a Muhammad Ali fan? Uh yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I was the senior class pre I was a senior class vice president at Belmont High School. The okay. senior class president was Veronica Porsche. We okay. lost touch after high school and then I see her on a poster for the like in the Manila fight, right? Right. Muhammad Ali sees the poster, wants to meet her. Next thing you know, they're married. Oh, what? So you have one degree of separation from Muhammad Ali. Because <laughs> I was buddies with, with one of his wives. And I think in, in the end, before he passed away, she was the one that was the most involved in everything, even though they didn't separate him. Yeah, helped him out. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, that's what's up. One degree of separation from Muhammad to Ben O'Chart. <laughs> and you never cease to amaze me, man. It's crazy. 
What's your, what's your favorite ice cream flavor? It's got to be uh, it's got to be some kind of a chocolate, you know, like a dark chocolate. Okay, all right. I am not a chocolate fan when it comes to ice cream, but yeah, yeah. Uh, so many chocolate. I am a pralines and cream. Pralines and cream is good. Butter pecan or something like that. Those are all good too. Any something with a with a with a fudge line in it, you know. I like uh, sure, you know. And when I used to go to Baskin Robbins when I was a kid, I'd get pistachio. Very good, also. Yeah, yeah. Favorite car of all time? I had a uh, three fifty six C, a nineteen sixty five three fifty six C or SC Porsche. When I was in college, okay. I bought it from somebody who just wanted to uh, get rid of it because they were tired of it and they're a good friend. I got it for a song. And man, that was a fun car. Oh my God, I can believe them yeah. boys class and the need for speed. <laughs> oh yeah. And you could take the tightest turn and you were flat as a pancake. Thing oh the thing never, never, never went never. back and forth, you know. And uh I've had other nice cars, you know. I've had the the bends and the jags and things like that, and none of them okay. handled the way this Porsche did, even wow. though the Porsche's technology was in the sixties. My uh, my dad had a '77 Pontiac Trans Am, all black, red, black bucket seats. Outstanding vehicle, a beast. Oh my god! Yeah, those so are the kind of cars ride. that you, you you put a ten dollar bill on the dashboard and you tell your passenger if you can grab it, you can have it. Then you hit the gas and they can't and get they it. can't get nothing. <laughs> <Can't grab that. laughs> oh man, uh, your favorite shoe ever. Man, I love the soft, the soft Kohans. Hey, those Kohans, classy yeah. shoe and super comfortable. Yeah, I had them on. I black I had a black pair of slip-ons this weekend, and but the lace-up ones, they got together with Nike, so they make that got that Nike bottom. Ooh, very nice. And and, uh, and but they got the wingtip fabric. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very comfortable. Classy, very comfortable. and it looks classy. Like that is the teacher and principal. A male choice. Yeah, of I like that. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> um, favorite movie of all time. Oh man, yeah, it doesn't get any better than this. It, it's a tough. It, it's a tough one because I love. I love cinema. Okay, very good. And, and um, you know, I got some uh, crazy movies that I like, like uh, The Fifth Element. Oh my god! I watch it every time it comes on. It's an amazing movie, man. That's you can't beat Bruce movie. Willie. Bruce Willie? Oh. <laughs> it's just such a good movie. And I mean, his stuff, you know, his, his stuff as the detective, you know, with the Nakatomi building and stuff, all of those that he did was, uh, I'm I'm a, I'm a fan of his. But um, yeah. the Godfather series, I mean, what okay. can you say? The Star Wars Glad series, what can you yeah. say? Uh, some of the, uh, you know, I like sci-fi a lot. But then you get stuff like the Green Mile and... Uh, you know, just classic movies that make you make you think. There's a, there was a movie that came out once called Sophie's Choice that w just kind of ripped your heart out. You know, so there's there's different mm -hmm. movies for different reasons. Sure, sure. Uh, what was your favorite school subject? Well, you know, I was. Um, I was kind of all about sports. Uh, okay. <laughs> PE, okay. PE was, was the favorite. <laughs> track, that track, man, and man, you. <laughs> track and football. But you um, know every scientific name of every fish, not, <laughs> not PE. <laughs> it's PE, man. I, I, I think um, I, it, it depended on the teachers too. I mean, I had some great teachers. I had a physics class in college that I loved, okay. and it was it was because the teacher made it so interesting. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and creative writing. I loved my creative writing classes. Outstanding. Good. Uh, most watched fish tuber. It's got, you know, it's got to be John. It's got to be John Hudson. Not only, um, I mean, I watched him for hours and hours and hours before I bought my first African cichlid. 
Oh, wow. Yeah, he's okay. I wanted to go in with my eyes open. I had some discus, and I still made a bunch of mistakes, you know. <laughs> but uh, – and then I watched a lot of Jay Wilson, too. And more recently, of course, I watch IFG and uh, and Corey a lot. Okay. With the Aquarium Co-op, and I watch uh, – and I watch IFG because – you know, the man's just lost his mind, the stuff that he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm having so much fun just watching him just completely, you know, just, <laughs> just I don't care. Up, what, I don't care what you think you're gonna see. I'm gonna just do whatever the whatever. Yeah, I'm whatever, doing. whatever it is. And you gotta you gotta admire that at some level. <laughs> <laughs> KG Tropicals, keep fishkeeping.com, and all your Fritz supplies. Use my link in the description below. <laughs> there you go. Right. Shameless plug. Favorite seafood. Man, it's hard to beat a um, it's hard to beat a good lobster. You know, good lobster that's cooked right. Thermidor? I like, I like shrimp too. <laughs> okay. And, yeah. All right. All right. And uh, what about favorite pizza toppings? Pizza. Pizza toppings, I'm kind of simple in that area. You know, I like uh, just maybe some cheese, some garlic, maybe some okay. fresh tomatoes, okay. and uh, maybe some basil. You know, just kind of keep it simple. Sometimes okay. I go crazy. If, if All I, right. Yeah, if I let myself get too hungry, then I'll get the meat lovers. Okay, let's yeah. go crazy, John. Yeah. <laughs> crazy, Ben. I'm sorry. <laughs> And ben then and John, let's go crazy on the pizza. <laughs> and then I don't eat for then I don't eat for about you know forty hours, or <laughs> like, a, like a python trying to pass this thing through. You know? yeah. you've been to Chicago. Yeah. Have you been to Chicago? You ever had Uno? I have uh, that deep dish pie, yes. the thin crust. Yes. I had yes. one delivered to my room one time, and you know that's for three people. You never right? finished it. Oh, I finished it. Did you really? I finished. I didn't eat for a day and a half. <laughs> Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It was delicious, and I couldn't stop. It was just so good. Was six kinds of cheese, and anyway. Oh. If you would have came hungry. up here to the, if you would have came up here to the ACA, I believe is it this weekend or next weekend? Uh, the AKA was the weekend we were in. Um, this week, this past weekend, but we have the ACA down here. I, I want to get you into one of uh, St. Louis's own Emos Pizza. Not deep dish at all. Very opposite. It's flat. But the toppings and the mozzarella, oh, mm. delicious. Well, my favorite pizza of choice now is the thin crust. Okay. Very good. Oh, you'll yeah. love it. You'll yeah. love it. Yeah. I don't want to be full with bread. I want to taste all the ingredients. And everybody wants to know, do pineapples belong on pizza? Yes or no? <laughs> I, I tend to avoid it, but I'll admit I have crossed the line sometimes. <laughs> hey, I'm not with, mad at you. With Canadian bacon. Yes, absolutely. That's the only way to have it. Yeah. yeah it's Hawaiian style. Exactly. I told you guys, pineapple and pizza is great. <laughs> well, Ben, now this is happening to you. I'm sorry, say that again. Well, that just happened to you. <laughs> you just leveled up, sir. You're now reached the inferno level. These are just questions that it's either that or this, this or that. Here we go. We're not going to take too much more time, but here we go. Inferno, it's hot. Hot or cold? Hot. Bath or shower? Shower. Short or tall? Short or tall what? <laughs> <laughs> there is none. There's none else. It's short or tall. <laughs> tall. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Goldfish or better? Oh, uh, Jesus. Better. Okay. Uh, better or guppy? Better. Okay. Sticking with the be better or killy? Killy. Ah, <laughs> kill your snakehead. <laughs> Ooh, if I get a snakehead, that'd be awesome. Uh, Arapaima or alligator gar? <sighs> alligator gar. I just love there that. Now. All right, there we go. 
Mammals or reptiles? Mammals. Starburst. I gave, my, I gave my beagle a big hug today. He gave me a hug. <laughs> oh, I, you know what? I love I love my beagle so much. Oh, that that hound dog is something else. And the way that you got they, beagles, I had I had a oh. beagle when I was uh, living with my mom. Uh, we actually think that the postman took him because he was super friendly and he was a little. Oh. But I had several. I had I had a couple of them. Yeah. But, um, um, that through my lifetime, but they are awesome dogs. Yeah, I got two of them. They will run a rabbit crazy. <laughs> we have two. We have a couple rabbits that go on the other side of our gate and just sit there and taunt them. Yeah, and absolutely. they howl and howl oh, and oh howl. My God. They yeah. keep. They go. Yeah, they'll wake up the neighbors, baby. They don't play around. No. Uh, Starburst or Skittles? Starburst. M and M or Reese's? M and M peanut. Uh, yeah. Yeah, peanut. Yeah. Okay, we'll do that. I'm with you on that one. Chocolate or vanilla? I think you've already answered. Chocolate, yeah. Yes. All right. Uh, would you pick a great movie or a great show? Live show? Yes. Yeah, live. Live. Okay. Okay. All right. Taco or burger? Burger. But a good taco is hard to beat. Damn, man. <laughs> uh, bacon or sausage? Bacon. Okay. All right. Uh, the pig or the cow? I think a pig would be more fun. Okay. <laughs> Cows are kind of boring. <laughs> they are tasty, bury, though. <laughs> you can bury more bodies with pigs. They just eat everything. <laughs> uh, mornings or nights? Man, um, now that I've gotten older, you know, I, I get a second win around 9 p.m., and then I, I'll, I'll film videos between 9 and midnight. Oh, wow. It's be, yeah, it's got to be night. Nights. Okay. Yeah. Uh, breakfast for dinner or dinner for dinner? I love breakfast for dinner. Uh, occasionally, it is definitely. Occasionally, yeah, yeah. Especially if it's chicken and waffles, that's almost putting breakfast with dinner. It's like you covered all the bases with that meal. <laughs> <laughs> if next time you go to Ve Vegas, go to um, the Hot House. I think it's called the Hut House or the Hot House. One of the two. They give you. Chicken and waffles. The waffles are thick, three yeah. of them, and they stick the chicken tender, boom, drizzle it with the syrup, and it's like this. It's this tall. You're sitting there like, yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting hungry now. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you <laughs> just look at it, look at it, mouth drooling, everything. Like, I can't believe I'm about to put this in my mouth. One of my friends here. One of my friends here in uh, Tennessee uh, walked into a restaurant, ordered. He said, "What would you like, sir?" And he said, "What do you recommend?" And she said a couple things. And one of them was steak. He said, "Yeah, I'll have the steak." Mm -hmm. And they brought him a chicken fried steak with gravy. Right? Oh, that was the steak. And he, didn't the, he didn't know that that was a steak down south. That's a steak. You know? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> chicken, he, yeah. That country fried steak could get you every time. <laughs> and he, but he he loved it. He loved it. They, they, Do you want me to take it back there? You no, know, no, you can leave it. I, I think I'm going to keep it. <laughs> yeah, they make them good. Make them good. Yeah. Uh, weekday or weekends? Uh, weekends, because I can actually okay. spend some more time with my wife because she works a lot. Okay. What up, Caleb? Uh, Disney World or Universal Studios? Disney World. Really? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, hot coffee or iced coffee? Hot. And I've got a story to tell you about my, my my trip to Universal. It it was it was not it was it wasn't good. I'll tell you uh, later off, off camera. I don't want everybody to know. Uh, beach <laughs> beach sand or mountaintops? If I'm skiing on the mountaintop, I'll take the mountaintop. But overall, probably beach. Okay. All right. Uh, a little late or super early? I like evenings, you know, but that's there's something about that crisp, fresh air in the morning before everybody's gotten up. It's kind of quiet. Yeah. So uh, I'll go up morning. All right. I'll go up early. I'm a little late for me all the time. <laughs> Brains or body? Oh, are you talking about like arriving for something? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm, uh, yeah, a little early. Okay. I'd rather be a little early. Oh, it's uh, super early or a little late. Oh, super early. I'd rather be super early. 
Okay. All right. All right. Uh, brains or body? Brains. Blood or boobs? Man, that's a tough one, man. Hey, man. You know, I'm, I'm like Rod. You know, Rodney Dangerfield. He said, "I must be a, I must be an ass man." Because I was growing up, everybody would go, "Hey, Rodney, you're an ass man." <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't pick. I can't. I can't choose there. That's not even fair. No. Okay. I mean, you know, you got your Jessica Bill and your Jennifer Anderson. You know, you waver it whichever way you want to go with it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it depends. It depends whether they're walking towards me or away from me. Well, oh my God, that's a great answer. <laughs> oh, fish sticks or chicken nuggets? Chicken nuggets. Okay. Um, quick, uh, wait, what I got here? Uh, quick trip or mobile gas station? Oh, well, I'd rather go none. I have a volt, so I can plug that thing in. I drive by and I wave everybody. <laughs> yeah, then your, your newfangled electric electricity <laughs> cars, <laughs> uh, fries or tots. Give me that one again. Fries or tots? Tater tots or fries? Not fries. Okay. Buffy the Vampire Slayer or Blade the Vampire Slayer? They're both pretty badass in their own way. Uh, Blade, though, is... is. I think I'd rather have him, you know, on, yeah. on my six. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> When he tells you to get down, you better get down. Yeah, get down. <laughs> he's, he's, he's the real deal. He's no nonsense. Absolutely. Uh, Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter? Ooh. I hate Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Really? Yeah, okay. the fighters and stuff. And I haven't messed with it since my boys were at home. But Absolutely. Anyway. Absolutely. Mario or Luigi? Mario. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Lois Lane or Mary Jane? Lois. Lois Lane. Okay. All right. You're trying to take on uh, Superman's chick, huh? <laughs> <laughs> the only game. <laughs> cash or credit? Oh, cash. Cash is king. Uh, plane, train, or car? All right, Caleb. Plane, train, or car? Mm -hmm. Which would you rather take? Uh, depends how far away it is and what I'm doing. I, I love a car trip, though. Do you? Okay. I'll take a car. Um, I just recently uh, saw the beauty of taking an Amtrak when I visit my family in Louisiana. Um, they've made some amenities there, and you can meet some people there. Pretty cool. Sit in the car. You can play spades and stuff like, sit and stuff like that on the Amtrak. So I kind of like that now. Kind of nice. Like, I haven't yeah. been on training forever. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to try that maybe sometime. Maybe go go back to California, go up the coast all the way up to Seattle. Yeah. You get some yeah. great scenery. They have Definitely. those glass those glass cars. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. A uh, home cooked meal or go out. I like them both, but at the end of the day, it's home cooked, man. Can't beat that. Can't beat home cooked. I'm with that. Well, here you go again. <laughs> and Mr. Ochart is his last leg of the hot spot. This is just called fill it in. I'm just going to give you a phrase and you're just going to fill it in. I'll do my best. <laughs> You've been doing a great job. Bang up job. <laughs> uh, the worst job I ever had was. You say best job? The worst. Job. Oh, worst job! I used to have. I was cleaning uh, animal cages in college in the science lab, and uh, not only was the daily activity horrible, but at the end of the sem semester, you had to you had to put all the animals in an autoclave because they would kill them. In an autoclave. Yeah. Take Wait, where was this at? This is at the University of the Science Lab. They would use animals for testing. 
Oh, and wow. my job was to clean the cages. And so I got attached to all these animals. Yeah. And I did, you know, they had a giant rabbit. They had hens. They had all kinds of stuff, oh. lots of mice. And they didn't tell me that at the end of the semester, they were required to, to euthanize all the animals. Jeez. And they did. And I came in one day and they said, oh, yeah, we euthanized them all last night. So be sure to put them in the autoclave. And that was this thing that gets up to about 3,500, you know, yes. turns them into dust, basically. Oh, and wow. So that was my you worst know, job. I'll tell you what. No, last time I heard the, 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 the name autoclave was when I was um, – I was I was trying to be a I wasn't trying to be but I was a beginning dental assistant and yeah. uh, you have Sterilize. to put uh, you know sterilizing sterilizing the instruments. Instrument. Yeah. they have to go into autoclave and I was like that thing heats up steam and poof no more germies on the <laughs> on the stuff <laughs> that's right I'm putting these on because I don't want to miss these are the key questions I could tell I don't want to miss them. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this, is for, this is for the money, right? This is for the money prize. Yeah, this is it. This is the money. The money hit. <laughs> All right. So that was your worst job ever. What was your first job ever? I was walking around a place called Echo Park in Los Angeles, selling uh, uh, a newspaper called the Free Press. It was like the hippies newspaper. Okay. And it was like a it was like a dime, and I would just walk around. I was about maybe eleven or twelve. Free press, free press, get your free press. And you know, <laughs> the hippie would pass, you know, pass the doobie to the person next to him and then just give me a dime and the, <laughs> the doobie. <laughs> <laughs> so they called it back then a doobie. <laughs> and they'd be playing the congas, you know, playing congas and stuff. And it was like a they called them love ins. <laughs> but the <laughs> It's like Willie Nelson stuff. That's right. The doobie, the doobie, and Puppy Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lucy. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, you were the paper boy. I used to love the game on Nintendo. I just break all the windows and lose all points. <laughs> Very cool. All right. Uh, by far the best vacation spot is Hawaii. Hawaii. Yeah. Kanapali on Maui. All right. Very nice. Uh, if I could star in any movie. Uh, I'd be, um, uh, in the second, in the remake of the, uh, the, the the remake of the Fifth Element, yeah. <laughs> Who would you, of course you'd be Corbin Dallas, correct? Yeah, exactly. Absolutely, Corbin. Oh, oh my God, that means I would have to be. Oh, uh, I would have to be. Um, um, you make Tucker, a good Prince Tucker. No, remember the the president, the president at the end. Oh, I could be Debo. Oh. Yeah, I can. <laughs> he was hilarious. He was good. He was good. But look, Chris Tucker played the hell out of that role. Oh God! Yeah. I love when he was signing when he was signing autographs. He was just dragging the pen across everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God! I love that movie. Oh, never gets, old. never gets old. No man. Every time it comes on, I gotta watch it. Every. Uh, all right. Uh, if you got a problem, yo, I'll solve it. So if you notice a breeding pair in your tanks, the first thing you do is? A breeding pair. I uh, First thing I do, I let them finish. <laughs> you never stop the train when it's going, huh? Put a blanket over the tank. <laughs> Turn the lights down, right? Hey, 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 sorry, folks. This is this is what you sorry. <laughs> Finish up. <laughs> Do it now. <laughs> no rush. Get it in there. <laughs> oh okay, so, my god. So what's the next thing that you do? <laughs> I'd probably watch. I'd probably oh watch. My god. You're well, I mean, watch, 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 watch the female and see if she's actually going to be holding and you know getting the 
Okay. I don't mean like watch them. Okay. <laughs> uh, you're nasty, Ben. You're nasty. <laughs> fish, fish voyeur. Okay. Right. Right. Fishy taboo. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. All right. Oh, you notice the parents are eating the babies. What do you do? I got to I got to make a I got to make a call. I mean, is it circle of life or do I want to try and save them? You know, you you try and I don't know. Do I want the fry? That's 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 a great question. You know, it's a tough it's a tough one. I mean, some people don't want I mean, you start doing that, you know, all of a sudden you need more tanks and yeah. and yeah. if they and if they keep going, you're going to need a second wave of tanks because the first wave is going to be too big for the second wave of fry. And next thing you know, you got 10 tanks going. So you got to make a choice early. And um, so I'd have to, I'd have to. Now, if let's say I had some red caps, some of those, let, you know, Lethronops red caps, or let's say I had a female from my auto pharynx tetrastigma. Sure. Man, you'd be pretty sure I'd be doing everything I could to get, get those fry, uh, you know, raised up or, or with that uh, paratilapia. Yeah. Right. The Polini that, you know, they're apparently yeah. like extinct in Madagascar. And only in the lobby now. Got to get I, them. If, yeah, if I had that paired up, I'd definitely get those fry and raise them up and and get them. That, just yeah, that could be a very lucrative move monetarily. If you can get them to pair up and start producing fry, it'd be a lot of fun. That's a beautiful fish. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Uh, fish, you know, fish with Popeye. What do you do? The only thing I've done with those kind of fish is I is I've just uh, upped my my water changes a little bit, okay. and hope that the fresh water would fix it. If okay. it starts to become, um, if it starts to get any signs of fungus or fuzz, sure. anything like that, I got to pull them out right away and treat them. Okay. Yeah. What do you can, treat with? Yeah. Are you a natural hot water and salty guy, or I'll use some salt. Uh, the Fritz. The the, the Fritz. Uh, uh, plus, right? Sure. Salt plus. I also use the. Uh, I'd probably hit him with some general cure. Okay. You know something like that. You, you're, yeah, that general you, cure. Yeah. You know, hope hope for the best. You know, the, these kind of things. You treat them, and you know, anyone who's had fish, mm -hmm. you, you you treat them, and 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 um, and you cross your fingers. Absolutely. Sometimes they respond. Sometimes they don't. I had a fish that lost an eye one time. as a gar, female gar. Oh. And uh, all she had was that just that that hole, you know, that concave hole there, and and uh, she'd only swim in the direction of her eye. It's kind of funny; she'd always swim just in one circle, just kind of following her eye. That's wild. Yeah. Um, and if you notice ick in your tank, what's the first thing you do? I turn the temp up, and yeah. I hit it with cordon. I, I've had real good results with cordon. Okay. Uh, ick attack, it's called. Okay. And, uh, you know, we mentioned clown loaches earlier. Uh, one of the reasons that I, I liked having clown loaches is that being a scaleless fish, if you have any ick at all, they're going to show it first. Sure. So they're, so they're kind of like a warning. If you have them in your tank, they're great because you can be sort of kind of preemptive. They have one little spot. Man, you hit it fast. Sure. And, uh, and you can get – but I get the temperature up. I gradually take it up to about 85, 86. Some people will throw some salt in. I've had really good luck with just high temp, a little bit of that cordon ick attack, and it goes away. I've – I've had it maybe three times and had full recovery every time. Very nice. Yeah. Last question in this. Create your own dream tank. How big and what would you stock it? Three to 500 gallons with a very large sump system. And, um, and I'd have... Uh, Maybe 35 or 40 large discus. A lot of plants and um, maybe some, um, maybe about 50 cardinal tetras. Maybe. I like it. Yeah. And, um, right. and that's it. Have it just be pristine. Have a UV sterilizer on there and, uh, you know, like a twist and, uh, I think it'd be beautiful. That's awesome. I love it. Listen, that that you <laughs> you handled yourself. Bye bye.
<laughs> you handled yourself like a like a true champion, Ben. I appreciate that. Um, if you wouldn't mind, a couple of minutes still staying on with us. I want to see if the chat has any questions for us, real quick, for Ben before he before we let him go. Any quick questions for Ben Ochar? He is out of the hot spot. He is unscathed. He gave us some laughs, some different answers. It was awesome, to say the least. But does anybody else have any questions that is that are in the chat? You can ask them now. Anybody? Anybody at all? Monica, Danny, Jeff, Watts, Looney, 503, Crystals, Pets and Plants, Danikin, Ray's, Aquatics, Widemus, Sean Squill, everybody, thank you for coming. Danny West, she wants to know what's your favorite aquatic plant. Well, I, you know, I, I, I do love the Anubias. I love that that rhizome, the rhizome, rhizome. You pronounce it, you know, that rhizome, a rhizome. The fact that you mm -hmm. can actually attach it to something, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, super glue it to a piece of driftwood, and I think that plant has uh, it's just very flexible. It's a tough plant. Yes. And it doesn't require a lot of light. It actually likes the shade. Mm -hmm. I think Anubius was from the god of, of shade or something, or the god of darkness or something from sure. Egyptian mythology, or I forget what it is. But uh, probably Anubius, yeah. yeah. I'm not yeah. a plant. I'm not a, I don't really know plants. There's probably sure. other plants out there that if I saw them, I'd go, wow, you know? Yeah. Oh. I think, I think Java fern is kind of cool. It is. And yeah. me being a newbie too, once you get those few under your belt and you start looking at them i know you're gonna fall in love with this ar mini um i'll show you at i'll show you backstage after this a beautiful plant um and 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 one of the ones they say are fairly easy to keep so uh very good mr 3000 is one of your biggest fans and one of my best friends I've known him for 25 years we wow. together <laughs> uh tennessee or cali he says well, Cali will always have a place in my heart. You know, I, I spent 65 years there, uh, tremendous memories, but realize that a lot of those memories are of a very different California than the California that is there now. So it, right now, at this moment in time, 100% Tennessee. Okay. There for, a variety, for a variety of reasons that, uh, that it would take me too long to go over with you. Outstanding. <laughs> Uh, Monica Lynn, my moderator extraordinaire, would like to see the tank behind you if she could. Well, we have uh, these here or the one back there? Uh, Monica, the one directly behind him now or the one where he was on the side behind him? Here, I'll show them. I'll show them all to you. All right, sounds good. Even better. And does your wife love the hobby while you're while you're doing that? Uh, she loves that I love it. She loves that you love it. Outstanding. Outstanding. Is that a, it looks like a red shoulder. I see your giraffe hat. Is that a red shoulder? Yes, it is. Okay. No, right. it's not. A, it, it's, um, yeah. Yeah, I think you have, a, and you have a giraffe in there. You have Venusus in yeah. there. Venusus in there, and, yeah. And you have a, uh, I'm afraid my boom's going to fall off the table here. And you have um, a hawk. Okay. There's a Bucanono in there. The Kuini, there's an eye biter hiding in the back. Ah, okay. I've got another eye biter. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, there's some beautiful, beautiful fish in there. And uh, I am going to be getting a sand diver because I got to have one. Yeah. Yeah. And <clears throat> here closer is my, is my older, more established. Let me move over here so you can see it. This is the older, more established uh, African cichlid tank, mm -hmm. but I think they're all they're all hiding because of the light and me moving around. Yeah, they're behind that black background, and uh, there's, in those there's a, a bicolor 500. This okay. is a uh, positive Columbus Johnson eye. There's oh, wow. a 
There's a beautiful uh, OB in there, one of the Skittles. There's that uh, down here at the bottom, I don't know if you can see him or not, is a Phoenix. Very hard to get fish. So give it Let's see if I can see him. Right there, Phoenix. Okay. Dragon blood is hiding on the other side. Very and nice. I'll, and I'll show you the other tank, which is my chair. Microphone. Someone says I like Venusas. I think they're underrated. They are pretty cool fish. They're beautiful fish. Uh, what and sand was that? Here we go. And oh, there's, okay, my, yeah. there, there's my South American tank. Very nice. Now, what sand? I have uh, in the established cichlid tank is a uh, that's a a a a, 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 a Caribbean sea aragonite. Okay. Aragonite, yeah. And in the in the tank that you're looking at right now, that's a lapis luster mixed with imaginarium black. Mmm, that's beautiful. That that salt and pepper look. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You see that paratilapia right in the middle there? Yes. Oh, crap. He must have unhooked. Oh. Oh. Hope he comes back in so we can uh, give him a proper, a proper goodbye. Definitely some, some <clears throat> nice tanks and some... some, some Real cool escaping, <clears throat> super clear tanks off the chain, man. Off the chain, yeah. Those severums, severums, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was thinking about severums also, and those geophagus, too. I was thinking about those, those guys, too. Uh, let's see if he goes back in. Here he is, he's right back with us. Yeah, it looks like the stream cut off, or yeah, yeah. We, we got you back, though. We're right here with you. All right. I was just talking about that para, uh, paratilapia. Okay, yeah. If you could see him on there. Yeah. And right in the middle, that's the guy that, that's the puppy dog in the tank, is that red-spotted okay. severum. Okay, yeah. That's the one that uh, looks at you when you come down asking for pellets, huh? Exactly. And those, you see the two viejas on the bottom right-hand corner? Can you see the viejas? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what? Oh. Uh, Left again. I think Funk wanted me to get some VAS. Can parrots go with dojo loaches? I would think so. They got those small mouths. It doesn't look like they would mess with them too much. And plus, the parrots stay around midstream. Uh, those dolo Jojo loaches usually stay towards the bottom. They come up to eat. I would think they would be good to go. And we are bike. Some connection problems, huh? Uh, you know what? You're you're kicking off. I didn't know. I didn't know if it was me or 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 maybe you. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Okay. Anyway, yeah, but anyway, one of those vias is the one that jumped. Oh wow. Yeah, and he's all back to normal now. Uh, that vieja is uh, is super cool. Oh, they got some great color on them, and especially when they get bigger. Yeah, he's still uh, he's still kind of there. There they are, right there. Yeah, they that's they, that's a beautiful tank right there. Beautiful tank. When you do when you do your scaping, do you how do you do your scaping and which way do you like to do it? Just whatever you feel? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I, I try and I try and work in thirds. You know, you heard that old law of thirds. Mm-hmm. Like a third here, thing like a break, divide up into three parts. Okay. But, um, you know, it's whatever kind of moves me. I, I love scaping. It's kind of like a, like a canvas, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, my dojo loaches are too big to get eaten by a parrotfish. Um, so I, I wouldn't do it if they were little, but yeah. Uh, we, we just had a question about would you keep parrotfish with dojo loaches? Yeah, I'm not familiar with either one of those fish. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, hate to I hate to answer about fish I haven't kept. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. 
What's up, Bird Garden? I tell you what, Ben. I don't know what about everybody else, but I enjoyed you and I really appreciate it, man. It, it's been a, it's been <laughs> it's been a great evening with you. My pleasure. pleasure. <laughs> Thank you so much. It was great meeting you and and, and spending time talking to you. And uh, we'll be looking forward to your endeavors. Um, can you tell us what days you're on and definitely tell us about cichlid, coffee and cichlids? Uh, let me get the mic over. Cichlids and coffee. Cichlids and coffee are Saturdays at 11 o'clock central. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a lot of fun. And a lot of, like, a lot of cool fish keepers show up and, and uh so the chats are fun and uh it's you know it's got it's it's like everything i do it it's got cichlid the name and i think that that sometimes might turn people away because they're well i don't keep cichlids you know i keep something else but the truth is the things we talk about uh, pertain to all kinds of fish keeping we talk about filtration setting up canisters setting up hang on backs substrate water movement mm -hmm. Disease, every time. Uh, scaping, you know, you name it. We talk about all of it. And it's just, and the first, usually the first third or so is a topic that I have, like in the thumbnail, there'll be a topic. And, but then from that point on, it's just a, like an open, open forum. It's a good time, you guys. Definitely uh, catch him at 11 Central Time. Yeah. For nine, coffee. At 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 o'clock Eastern. There it is. That's my type of stream. Cichlids and coffee, says Danny Weshi. <laughs> this guy's a legend, Andy G. Hey, Andy. How are you? <laughs> hey, listen. Hey, it's nothing like meeting them in person, you guys. So if we can catch if we can catch Ben at another, if you can catch him at another uh, Aquashella, he said he may be in the one in Dallas, which I believe is in August, if I'm not mistaken. I, I believe so, yeah. Definitely got to check him out. Mike's Aquatics and Things, thank you for coming through. Jay Watts, you already know what it is. Monica Lynn, you know what it is. Listen, Ben, don't be a stranger, man. Uh, you're now a friend of the channel, so we will, uh, you know, come in anytime. Um, we'd love to see what you got going on when that when that 210 gets there. Definitely got to check check that big boy out behind you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me Let me crash your live stream party after I get that set up. And oh. uh, we'll we'll uh, in it we'll show it to your viewers. Oh man, it'll be a, it'll be a, it'll be grand. We'll make yeah. a big out of it. There you go. <laughs> I might there do a go. giveaway for your tank. That's right. We'll pop <laughs> open some pop open some champagne. Yeah, <laughs> we'll do it. All we'll right, do it. Well, thank you, Ben. I appreciate it. Hey, busy chat. You thank you, Drew. Know what it is. I appreciate you all. And uh, get at me, you guys. Peace out. Yep. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Thank <laughs> you.